Huh. Where's that perverse stink coming from? Oh, right. Pumbaa. They may be cute in cartoon form, but in the real world, those warthog tusks should not be underestimated. As long as that hog's eyeballing me, I really don't give a damn about the tree trunk. I have the most terrible feeling that if I take one step more, that warthog is going to eat me. Perhaps the pig's got a cat allergy as well. Whoa. Success. Just like in the adventure movies. So, what do we have? Great. The guide rope on the right-hand side of the bridge is broken. That's all I need. I can't get across with it like that. I need to repair the rope first. A prime example of a professional barge job. There's a tool bag hanging down there. I hope nobody left it there when they took the express route to the bottom. I don't need a walking stick quite yet, but hey. You never know. Straight and long. Could be useful. Dance. I must have scared him up. I can't get at them with my bare hands. One long hook thing coming right up. to mama. Well, what have we got here then? The wrench fits. Now, let's just hope the mast doesn't fall when I remove the connector. How about that? Rope connector gone, mast still standing. A woman needs a little luck sometimes. A limp sock. all that difficult. That ought to hold. It's looking pretty sturdy. Unfortunately, I can't do much here with just my bare hands. Other than strangle people with dumb ideas. Still a bit of a wobbly affair, but it's not going to get any better. Looks halfway safe again. I ought to be a bit cautious all the same. Whoa, what a mess. Who did this? Hello? Professor Hartman? Strange. Come on here. 
What the hell happened? I had to take a look around. A four-legged stand. I ought to leave the stand where it is. A four-legged stand. I ought to leave the stand where it is. There's a fireplace here, but it's stone cold. Cold ashes and stones. It's a motion sensor. The working range of this sensor is 160 degrees. won't be attracting much interest on the local real estate market. Trespassing here is not prohibited, just impossible. A four-legged stand. A genuine sun trap. floorboards look pretty rotten. You want me to get a wood splinter? Even if the floorboards look rotten, you need something a little more heavy duty than a manicured fingernail. A pipe. That's all I have to say about that. What I'd really like to know is what threw this great big locker all over the place. Feels kind of locked. I'm not going to get the metal locker open with that. I would need either an oversized tin opener, or, to keep it simple, the key. Dry wood. Should burn well. A four-legged stand. Interesting storage method. That's how you keep your grub away from the hungry fauna. If I had a jetpack, then maybe. A four-legged stand. This winch holds the crate hanging from the cable. The crank is missing. wrench fits inside the pipe. The laws of leverage are your friends. I'm so excited. There must be something really cool in there. Favorite occupation, plundering. Mostly fruit and veg. I'll leave that here and take everything else. The mobile solar charger has to be assembled before it can be used. for outdoor use. Fully ruggedized. Well, it survived whatever hit the hut completely unscathed. A first aid box. A letter? The professor received this letter from his wife on their wedding anniversary. <laughs> 
Turns out married middle-aged people have very little of interest to say to one another. I'll check the first aid kit. According to the sticker, that's Professor Hartman's laptop. Sadly, though, the battery's flat. A mobile solar charger has to be assembled before it can be used. Bearing in mind I don't like puzzles, I've rather nailed that one, haven't I? I'll connect the solar charger to the laptop. I'll put the laptop and the solar charger here in the sun. Ugh, the laptop's protected by a code strip of adhesive tape. It's stuck pretty fast. I need something to scrape it off. Might leave a scratch, but the ends justify the means. Is that just the manufacturer's logo? It looks like wedding bands or something. The laptop's protected by a it looks like some kind of diary. Sounds promising. Viruses that are responsible for evolutionary leaps? That story would be an absolute scoop. Now. Is there any truth to these ghost stories? Shit. Looks like it's quite possible they're close by here. I need to be careful. At least I now know where I can find the professor. Only now all that's missing is any clue to where this Christian mission is. No saved mail. And if I was... No saved mail. And if I was gonna send or receive any, then I'd also need an internet connection. This is where Hartman saved the pictorial info from the current expedition. A map of the region to the south of the Basumtwi. Aha! Uh -huh. That over there to the west has to be the mission that Hartman wrote about in his notes. Even the most ambitious scientist has to switch off every now and then. Can't wait to see what kind of music the prof's into. No forecast without the internet. And I don't need a laptop to see how the weather is right now. I'll set up the motion sensors and build a nice big fire to keep the beasties at bay. That'll have to wait until tomorrow. I ought to get all the nighttime preparations done first. A decent campfire and a set of functioning motion sensors should mean I can sleep in peace. The 
working range of this sensor is this sensor has a working range of 120 degrees. This sensor has a working range of 75 degrees. A sensor with a working range of 90 degrees. I'm thinking that the sensor belongs on top of the stand. This sensor has a working range thinking that the sensor the working range of the I'm thinking I'm thinking that the sensor looks like the sensors are set up according to plan Now, I ought to make a fire. It'll keep me safe tonight from the cold and whatever else is out there. Let's get cozy. There, all done. Now I'm gonna get some shut-eye, and in the morning I'll head to the mission and track down this research team. them off somehow. The fire seems to be keeping the beasties at a distance, for now, but they're not being driven away by it. This is getting really weird. Those red eyes. There must be more than a dozen of them out there. Perhaps I can find something to scare them off before they realize my fire isn't so scary after all. Like hell I will. I'm staying right by the fire, no mistake. Maybe it'll give them a fright. They're gone. Hopefully they're gonna stay gone too. It won't be too long now until sunrise. What a night. I never got back to sleep. What were those things? Hey, maybe I caught them on camera. What the? In all the horror movies I've ever watched, I've never seen anything like this. Now there's pretty much nothing to stand in the way of a comfortable evening. a westerly direction to get to the mission. Professor, I'm on my way. The mission, at last. Hello? Anyone home? God be praised, my child. What can I do for you? My name is Samantha Peters. I'm looking for a group of scientists. Their leader is called Professor Hartman. According to the notes I found in their camp, they were headed here before they disappeared. Yes, the men you're looking for arrived here yesterday. Finally, I've caught up. Can you take me to them? Unfortunately, that's not possible. They are in quarantine. Quarantine? They are very ill. They have high fevers and are unresponsive. Nobody is allowed near them until the doctor gets here. We want to avoid any possible spread of the disease. Can I at least have a brief talk with Professor Hartman? It really is very important. The professor... isn't here. Not here? Where is he? If I've understood the men correctly, they were attacked at night and the professor was taken away. Damn it! Do you know who attacked them? You have to go now, my child. It is not safe here when the darkness falls. What aren't you telling me? 
What is it that you're so afraid of? I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on here. Child, I just want to protect you. If I let you in, you could become infected, and outside you are not safe from the- Yes, not safe from what? In the scientist's notes, it says that one of them was attacked by some animal species he didn't recognize before he became ill. That... that was no... animal. Well, what was it then? For Christ's sakes! Oh, forgive me. Our Father, who art in heaven. Listen, sister. You will now talk, or else I will break the fifth commandment. Who ambushed the scientists and dragged off the professor? They come from above. The trees. Locals? Rebels? Hunters? No, not humans. Well, what then? Not animals? and Not humans? Aliens, perhaps? The Asambosam. Asambosam? Never heard of them. Ancient Ashanti legends tell of strange nighttime beings that lurk in wait for their victims among the boughs of the trees. They pluck unfortunate souls from the ground using their long, sharp claws and then drag them off to their caves where they then suck the blood from their victims' bodies. So what does your boss have to say about your believing in such blasphemous scare stories? Scare stories? When you have lived among the Ashanti as long as I have, there's very little that appears unbelievable. <laughs> Let's reel this conversation back in from the nether regions of God's asshole and stick to the facts. I shot this photo last night. This little freak was one of a whole group sitting in the trees above me. Might this be one of your... Asambosam? Holy Maria, Mother of God. You can count your blessings that you are still alive, my child. So these freaks really have slept off the professor then? Suppose it's true. Where would the Asambosum take their victims? Into their caves. I got that bit. Where are they exactly? My child, you really don't want to go there. Uh, yes, I do. There's one hell of a... Sorry. A real scoop of a story there for sure. And I just might be able to save the professor while I'm at it. That is, as long as these things haven't sucked him dry already. Then I really won't be able to stop you, my child. Wait here a moment. This will be a great help to you on your reckless undertaking. Take it. What is it? Some intense studies of the Asambosam and Ashanti legends. Thanks. May the Lord watch over you. This is where the notes begin. Hmm. So there were already patients at the mission with the same symptoms as the scientists. So were these men under attack from the same creatures? Let's see. Here it is. The attackers came out of the trees and surrounded them. There had also been similar cases in the past. Hmm. The locals call the attackers the Asambosum. They're also supposed to be responsible for transmitting a virus. The old Ashanti shamans were able to control these mysterious beings and could protect themselves from the disease. The priest found himself in great danger on his quest for the antidote. The Asambosum exist. Now it's gonna get interesting. Ugh, such a lot of text. The priest stumbled across one of these Asambosum and followed him to a cave. The translation of the inscriptions at the cave entrance brought something astonishing to light. It detailed a description of a ritual which could protect against catching the Asambosum disease, and which could also cure it. They carried out the ritual, and despite no ready explanations for how, it worked. These experiences really rocked Father Samuel's concept of the world. This is where it lists what you need for the ritual and how to carry it out. It's... well, it's incredible. I suppose I have to accustom myself to the notion that the Asambosum may not be pure fiction. The priest's very convincing. Unfortunately, he took his knowledge of the route to the cave to the grave with him. At least I now know how I can protect myself from the Asambosum disease. When I find out where they're hiding, I still might be able to rescue the professor. Oh, a loose page has fallen out. It's blank. Not much to look at. I won't get any more out of the sister. And with any luck, everything I need to know about the Asambosum Caves will be in this diary. I 
ought to concentrate on the plants I need, as listed in the diary. I ought to concentrate on the plants I need, as listed in the diary. A few stems of alisum also need to go in the pot. I ought to concentrate on the plants I need, as listed in the diary. It looks like the Goethe plant. I'll pluck myself a blossom from it. Star lily. Very pretty. One blossom for my hair, one for the ritual, and one to stamp under my feet as an expression of rebellion. One blossom from the hyacinth is enough, according to the diary. That has to be rose herb. I need a stock from it. An empty clay bowl. Who left this here? I may at times have let myself get talked into things. I also may have been incentivized by the odd payment. But grave desecration is definitely off the agenda. I may at times have let myself... Father Samuel's grave. Strange. No epitaph, no date of birth, no date when he died. Just the name. Oh, and nine curious symbols chiseled into the stone. Looks like lines and trees. Great. That lets me transfer the symbols onto the paper. The pencils had it. But I've now got perfect copies of the nine symbols on Father Samuel's gravestone. On the gravestone it says, J.H.M. Excuse me for not standing up. <laughs> Must have been a proper gentleman. Or a Groucho Marx. Billy, 1907 to 2006. Only the good die young. Either he had a low opinion of himself or a wicked sense of humor. Nothing good comes from interacting with gravestones. Sister Josephine, 1852 to 1904. Here rest her bones, and for the first time, alone. <laughs> Cheeky. Julius, 1767 to 1832. Here lie my mortal remains. I just wish they were yours. <laughs> That's terrible. transferred the ornamentation from the gravestone onto the paper. Okay, I'll carefully cut out the different symbols. I can't exactly say I'm crazy about puzzles. I'll take this part as my starting piece.
the map. The route to the Asambosum's caves. The Asambosum's caves must be near here. Hopefully the professor's doing all right. The entrance to the caves, and no sign of the professor. I'd better go in and take a look. After carrying out the written instructions for Father Samuel's protection ritual, of course. I have absolutely no inclination to go catching hideous jungle monster disease. It's actually here. Weird. There are no birds. No animal calls. Even the bats seem to be frightened to make a rustle. I'm not superstitious, but why take an unnecessary risk? Without the protection ritual, not even ten Asambosum could get me into those caves. The pot's empty. Let's not get greedy. I've got the clay bowl already. Let's decant this delicate brew. The lemonade's too thin to apply to a paintbrush. And in it goes. And in it goes. Home economics is for housewives. Boiling the lemonades produced a thick, sticky syrup. That should work. Gotcha. The ants. Almost too easy. I had to give it a go with chopstick. One more. And in it goes. And in it goes. So, that ought to be all the ingredients. Let's see what happens. Ugh, the way that stinks, just the smoke could keep pretty much anything away from me. Was that one of those things? A mask with eyes, mouth, and some kind of war paint. Even more passages. Really does seem to be more extensive than I first thought. There's a mask hanging on the wall here as well. Looks different from the other rocks. What is it?
looks like one of those weird lamps they sell in the Scandinavian furnishing store around the corner back home. Let's fuel this lamp and see what happens. The resin's burning. It's like some kind of graphic novel. The story begins with a man choosing children from a large group. They follow him into a cave, and the door closes after them. The children continue to live there while the man teaches them to fight. The man also gives them food, and so the children gradually grow into men. But what is that? The children seem to change on the way. Their arms become longer, and they get great big fangs like predatory animals. Pretty gruesome. Fuel this lamp and see what happens. The resin's burning. The poor children. If I only knew how they were changed, they'd make the story of the century. Perhaps the professor knows the answer. If he Lamps focusing the glow from the burning resin onto the cave wall. I should take a closer look. Not the slightest trace of Prof Hartman. Only more passages that lead deeper into the caves. Was that an animal? Or, or a human? Or... Fuel this lamp and see what happens. The resin's burning. The poor children. Perhaps the professor. Fuel this lamp and see what happens. The resin's burning. The poor children. If I only knew how they were changed, they'd make the story of the century. Perhaps the professor knows the answer. This mechanism with the five stone wheels would appear to open the door in this room.
Let's fuel this lamp. The resin's burning. The poor children. Perhaps... Creatures. I have to drive the Asambosum away to be able to get to the professor. They are cute, in a Lovecraftian sort of a way. But no, no hooks today. considerable pain. I'm not going to be able to move him until those wounds are patched up and he's feeling better. Here, get these down, you prof. And that should keep the blood off my clothes, and, broadly speaking, inside him. At least until I get him out of here. That will have to do until we get back to the mission. Don't worry, Professor. I'll get us out of here. Hey, Professor. You look considerably less shit than you did when I found you two days ago. Welcome back to the land of the living. Thank you for the uh, expressive compliment. The sisters have looked after us quite devotedly. And of course, my deepest thanks to you for your getting me out of there, Miss... Um... Peters. Sam Peters. Ah, and you are the journalist. Please forgive me for setting off without you, but the situation left me with no other choice. Forgiven and forgotten, if you give me the story as promised. Of course. So you have a few minutes for me then? Take a long look at me. Do I look like I've got anything else planned? I'm just not entirely sure that I'll be able to give you all of the answers. Let's find out. You want to know what the Asan Bosom are? Spill it, Prof. They are humans, I'm sure of that. Did you see the wall paintings in the caves? Yeah. The Ashanti were always a very secretive people with an extraordinary bond with nature. As with all native peoples, their living space also forms the basis for their existence. They naturally defend it with every means at their disposal. At some point, the Ashanti shaman must have realized that they would not be able to defend their lands indefinitely from outsiders. They therefore trained up some quite exceptional warriors. The ritual that's shown in the cave paintings. Correct. But those things don't appear to be human in any way. What happened? Well, it happens that there is a particular species of snail, which is incidentally the reason we were here at Lake Bosomtui in the first place. Whose genome has changed through eating the algae brought here by the meteorite. Yes, exactly. The algae may have been carrying a virus, which, over a relatively short period of time, triggers a rapid genetic mutation in a species. There are supporting cases. On the Indonesian island of Flores, they found the fossilized remains 
of a very small but adult human who was a genetic successor to Homo erectus. All evidence suggests this subspecies of dwarves evolved in only a few generations as a result of their isolated environment and in response to the narrow, low-ceilinged cave systems of the region. An unbelievable evolutionary step. Relative to conventional evolution, this process really did take place at the speed of light. As with the Asambosa? Possibly. Perhaps, as with the snail and the algae, the virus is the explanatory factor across all these examples. How far does this go? Perhaps the shaman knew that the algae possessed some form of mutational capability and raised his warriors on it. The terrifying result you've witnessed firsthand. Then these warriors are designed with the sole purpose of keeping outsiders like us away. That is my interpretation, yes. And what about this disease they carry? That, alas, is one of the questions I cannot currently answer. The Asen Bosom themselves appear to be immune to it. Perhaps it's a further defense mechanism. Do you think that they killed anyone? No, at least not directly. The evidence so far suggests they were designed to keep potential aggressors at bay, not to actively eliminate them. So what now? As snail research goes, Professor, this story is more sensational than most. That may well be the case. But? The Shaman and the Ashanti have only been acting in the best interests of their people and in perceived self-defense. And that justifies their turning children into monsters? We don't have to approve morally. But does morality apply in the case of survival? Doesn't every nation do reprehensible things every day in the name of survival? Clearly, we are not the first Westerners to come here. And I doubt the intentions of all such visitors are as benign as our own. In this special case, I have to ask myself, even as a scientist, is knowing the answers more important than doing the right thing? Answers are what we're paid for. Then I hope never to see the day that we run out of questions. Do what you think is right. So, I have to make a decision. Should I go ahead and publish the story? I simply didn't have the heart. May a cloak of silence remain forever over the existence of the Asimbosum. Freedom really is so much more important than anything else. Talking of freedom, that's something I can also enjoy limitlessly, though sadly not on my little sailboat. When I got back to Hamburg without a single line of copy, my editor flipped and bounced me back onto the street. Whether or not he managed to get over the small heart attack that followed, I'm afraid I don't know. And frankly, I don't give a damn. It's time for me to drop by on Max in Berlin again. Perhaps he'll finally even introduce me to his beloved Nina. From the way he went on about her in Indonesia, I don't think they'll be apart for too long. And maybe he'll have a fabulously lucrative job for me and get that sailboat back on track.
things are getting... I'll get us out of here. Hey, Professor. If it, P. Uh, oh, stay. Let me speak. Hey, Cor. The. Was the. Yeah, the. Oh, uh, as. Oh, uh, the. And. The. The. Uh, the. And. We. Clean. And. The. The. So. I have to make a decision. Should I go ahead and publish the story? In retrospect. Publishing the Asambosum story really wasn't such a good idea. At least, not for the Asambosum themselves. There was a gold rush. Scientists, journalists, tourists, even big game hunters. The military looked on and did nothing. The few game wardens were helpless. When mass demonstrations back in the West finally delivered human rights for the Asambosum, it was almost too late, but at least the last Asambosum had been freed from the clutches of unscrupulous zoo owners and show people. They'd been moved to rehabilitation stations, where they're being prepared for their return to their original habitat. The Basumtui has been declared a World Heritage Site and Nature Reserve, monitored by an international protection force. Oh yes, and as for me, well, the story made me a small fortune some amount of fame and a not-so-small sailboat. In fact, a vast one. So, not such a bad ending after all. <laughs>